All right, so how you guys doing? Are you happy? Yeah. All right. We're, we're going to be talking about trouble ahead. Can you hit that fan, please? Por favor. Trouble ahead. Can you guys all agree that we've, been a, we've had a troublesome year? All right, well, we have. And if you don't know, it just gets weirder and weirder. Just when you think you've seen it all. Wow. Okay. Security. Yeah. Just when you think you've seen it all, the president comes down with COVID. And his wife and the whole dang cabinet and a whole bunch of people. I'm telling you, man, this, they're, they're probably going to make a movie about 2020. I, I have no doubt. They're going to probably call it 2020 or something. There's a lot of trouble, right? But hey, check this out. Everybody outside those doors has trouble right now. I know we got stuff going on in our lives, and, and no doubt about it, but we have Jesus. They don't. Amen? And so that's what the whole happy tour is about, you know, the um, flash mob and all that stuff. We're going to go out there and do what we do best with the battle wagon and be happy and be a light out there in that darkness. So the opening is this. How do we fix what's broken? A lot of stuff broken right now, not only in the world, but within our own lives, too. Things are going on with, you know, the economy, jobs, whatever. Just being locked up in your house, you know, with the same person day after day after day. I wasn't talking about me, personally. I'm, I mean, some of you, you know. I, I mean, I love all of you, but I don't know. Could you imagine being locked up in a, in a house with me day after day? Right? Okay. Right? You, I mean, you're all out there going, yeah, that'd be kind of fun. Well, you, wow. All right. Well, anyway, let's open up a word of prayer, and then we're going to dive in. Amen. So, Father, we do lift up this night to you. And this study, Father, tonight as we dig into your word, Father, we ask your Holy Spirit to be with us, to open our eyes and our ears and our hearts, Father. Together as a family, we lift up our president, Father, and we lift up his wife and all those that are ill right now. In fact, everybody that's going through this COVID madness right now, Father, we ask that your hand wave across our country, Lord, across our world, Lord, and move this thing into some place else. Tonight, Father, we invite your Holy Spirit to be with us in Jesus' name. Amen? Okay, so how do you fix stupid? Oop. How do you fix what's broken? <laughs> wow. That was a Freudian slip there, wasn't it? Kind of like a nibble bath. <laughs> yeah, they don't know what I'm talking about, and they never will. So praise the Lord. Yeah, go Google nibble bath. Okay, don't. yeah, probably don't want it actually, but <laughs> hallelujah, right? Okay, so check it out. This is how we fix what's broken. We start with our healing. That's our first fill in is our healing. We got to get ourselves right first. And what I mean by right is we're saved. And if you're not, you will be by the end of the night. Amen. But we got to get ourselves to a point that we understand life happens. There's another way to say that, but we're going to stick with life happens. Amen? Amen. Bills come, jobs come, come and go, you know, relationships, family, friends, all that stuff. You know, we, we have the same issues that the world has, but sometimes we get so wrapped up and we get like just focused on our junk that we forget how much healing that we have, how much Jesus has taken on for us and taken away from us. And we get kind of we get kind of sucked into the world's way of thinking. And that ought not be, man. We got we, we to remember that we're more than conquerors. We're a royal priest. We're a holy nation, man. We have power and we have to draw upon that power first with ourselves so that we can be happy. And I want to tell you guys something. Man. We're doing the happiness series, right, on Saturdays. We're, we're doing the, the happy tour when we go out with the battle wagon and, and Doc got, you know, all the banners all put up and stuff. And I meant to send pictures, but I'll, I'll have them next week. Anyway, it says free water and free prayer. And they're like 12 inch letters, man. You can like see them from across the parking lot. We even got these cool face shields so you can see the happy faces or they can see our happy faces when we're praying with them. And, and I got to tell you something, man. You might, not, you might not get this, but Happiness is the key right now. The people are so sad and they're depressed and they're in despair. They're just so down right now and they're squashed. You can go to a store or a gas station, they look like zombies walking around. And you give them a little bit of prayer, a little bit of encouragement, and you can just like see their faces light up, man. 
And so that's what I'm determined to do is to get us all out into the world. And the more that we can help people be happy, the happier we get ourselves. So there's a few things we need to do. And we're going to start off in Psalm 100. And, you know, God's word is very clear on how to be happy. I got to tell you, man, God's word is packed full of happiness. And I don't know why, you know, some churches or even Christians are so glum, chum. You know what I mean? They're just like all down in the mug and everything. And what is that word? Stoic? It's like they got a stick up there in their ear. You know what I mean? And you know how uncomfortable that could be to have a stick in your ear? <laughs> right. That's not what God, God called us away from. He called us to happiness and joy and rejoicing, man. Look what it says in Psalm 100. Make a joyful shout to the Lord, all you lands. A joyful shout. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Can I pray with you? And you got the big, like, Mary Bluesville smile on your face, man. That, check it out, man. Our happiness is crucial to them. If they, come up to, if they come up to our battle wagon, man, and we're all, you know, ready to, like, you know, get a rope or something like that, man, I wouldn't come up to people like that because I already got a bunch of baggage. The last thing I want is to come up for prayer and someone go, look, can I talk to you for a minute, man? I'm really having some problems. That would suck, <laughs> right? Then they'd be going, well, man, can I pray for you? <laughs> we, we, yeah, we don't want that, man. He says, make a, make a joyful shout to the Lord, all you lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. And that gladness means happiness. Serve him with happiness. Come before his presence with singing. Right? This is what he's talking about. Know that the Lord, he is God. It is he who made us and not we ourselves. We are the people, we are the people and the sheep of his pasture. All right? Now, if we're going to call ourselves Christian, we're going to call ourselves believers on Christ, then we ought to start believing like he wants us to believe. And he wants us to believe joyfully and happily, and shout about our salvation out there. It, it's, not, it's not the same when you tell someone, you know, Jesus can probably really help you. You know, I think if you just kind of prayed a little bit more, you'd be better. Man, we got to be out there telling them, man, you need Jesus in your life. I was a yuckety yuck, now I'm a yummy yum, man, and you can be that way too. You don't have to live this life all down and glum and bummed out, man. Yes, life happens, but check it out. Jesus transcends all that stuff. He's above it all. Amen? Do we still have to deal with our problems? Absolutely, man. My, my whole philosophy on dealing with problems is track it down and kill it. And then just get on with sharing Jesus with somebody. Amen? I'm forgiven of all my sins, so don't piss me off. <laughs> oh, I'm getting at you. Like, wow. No, I haven't shot anybody in like six months, so I'm, I'm like on a roll right now, man. It was getting so bad, I was going to come to bust the knuckles. My name is Denver. I'm a great believer in Christ. I keep shooting people. No, I don't shoot anybody. I haven't shot anybody in a long time. So, yeah, hi, Denver. <laughs> Check it out. Go over to Psalm 32 with me real quick. 32, 11. He says, be glad in the Lord, you righteous. Be glad in the Lord and rejoice. First of all, that first little sentence there, be glad. Happy, glad is a, is a term for happy. And not happy like, oh boy, you know, I got some balloons and I'm happy. This happiness is that internal spiritual happiness that comes from the Holy Spirit. And he's saying, be happy in the Lord. And just so you know, that word happy is used a lot in blessed in the Bible. Like blessed are those that, blessed are the peacekeepers. They'll inherit the kingdom of God, I think is what it is. Is this girl going to do this all night long over here? No, I'm sorry, Linda, I'm just kidding. You sneeze, bless you. Happy you, all right? Blessed and happy are used together in the Bible, and it's not just happy like, well, I'm having a good time. It's happy that, like that. Remember Steve Martin and the Happy Feet? Yeah. It's happy like that, man, where it's just like uncontrollable, just powerful. We were happy. They were having happy feet right up there, as a matter of fact. And he's like, be happy in the Lord and rejoice. Be joyful about your salvation, man. When we go out there, when we're taking the happy tour out, we want people to look at us and go, man, whatever they got, I want some of that right there. It's, it's an, it, it draws people in. It doesn't repel people away. And right now, I'm telling you, man, the vines are ripe right now. There's so many fruits out there that need picking, man, and we need to go out there and make fruit salad, man. Because you can, you can go anywhere right now, and you'll see people all down. And it's so easy. You, you can start off. We're going to do it in Jesus' Freak. I'm going to show you guys how to get out there, man, and really get busy, but in a joyful, happy, fearless way where there's no weird animosity going on. Nothing like that. 
You'll be able to just go out there and, and start a conversation with someone, have a conversation. Me, personally, I just tell people, hey, God bless you. And by the face, they're either like, you know, yeah, you know, I hope he does, or get away from me, you Jesus freak. You know, by and large, most people are nice. They'll smile. They'll say thank you. And like right now, I'm kind of in a bold place right now. So I kind of move past all the chit chat and just go, can I pray with you? And it's like a shock, man. It's like uh, the Heinlich maneuver. Has everybody, anybody ever done the Heinlich? Boy, did I get that wrong for so many years, man. But you know what? It was still effective. I mean, people still, oh! and they, uh, stuff came out. It wasn't comfortable for me, but I was like, ah, oh, somebody's life's at stake here. I'm like, okay, oh, and out it came, you know? And then years later, I learned the arm part, you know? Like, who knew? So mine kind of works, too. I mean, if you want to give it a try, go for it, but... Anyway, it's, it's a heck of a conversation starter. Anyway, so that really has nothing to do with it, except for the shock value. Come on back, everybody. You guys are so easily distracted, man. Like, dang, a rabbit hole. Yeah, when you ask someone like straight out that's in, in that place that people are in right now, can I pray with you? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say nine out of ten people will say yes. And the people I've prayed for, like randomly, very, very... Seldom they tell me what they need prayer for. It, it's like they don't really need to because I know that everybody's down right now and they need to be happy. They need to be lifted up and joyful. So my prayers tend to be a little more upbeat, not so much like, you know, give your life to Jesus, you stinking thief and sinner, you're going to burn in hell if you don't. That's not effective, really, out there in the world. It's more like something like, you know, Lord, lift them up. You know, build their spirits, up, Father. Put a smile on their face. Let them see past all their junk right now and see your righteous glory, man. And people really respond to that stuff, man. Now, what they do with it, I don't know. But it doesn't matter because what's happened is a seed gets planted right there, man. Whether they choose to receive it or not, that's kind of on them. But right now, everybody outside those doors is starving right now. They're starving for a little joy and happiness. They need a break from all the junk right now. And we're in such a perfect place right now to go out and share our faith because the truth is most of them have tried everything else. Now, whether you know it's trying to find another job, getting drunk, getting high, going out and running around on one-night stands, whatever it is, they're, they're, it's all hollow. It's all temporary. You know, They might have a little bit of fun for a minute, but the cliff is a drag, man. We can give them something that sustains them, and it continues going on. And he says here, and shout for joy, all you who are upright in heart. And that's what, that's what this thing's about right now, this first thing, our healing. We need to get our hearts right with God. And part of that is trusting him throughout all this stuff. There is a lot of junk going on right now. I understand that. But historically, have you not been through some stuff already in your life? I mean, you guys, do you guys, have you forgotten B.C., you know, before Christ, what life was like? All the times that you, you were certain you, were, you may not even survive what you were into right then, or maybe your heart was so broken that you just never thought you could breathe again. Amen? You're like playing, ooh, Jackie Blue, over and over again on your little 45s. Anybody here old enough to remember 45s? Checking it out here. All right. I got one in my truck. <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> Or am I? Okay, anyway. We, we want to, and we don't want to just act it out and fake it, okay? Like we're joyful. We get our heart right with God and understand that no matter what's going on in our life, He's dealing with it if we allow Him to deal with it. But more importantly, they don't have what we have. So when we can come at people joyfully and happy and smiling and all this other stuff, they know we're just as messed up as they are because we're all living in the same world. But we give them something. What we give them is a horizon. Something to aim for that they can get a little bit of hope in. Because right now, people are really hopeless, man. And, and it brings us to our second point, our calling. Our calling. And, and, you know, sometimes people are like, well, I don't know what my calling is. You know, Some people are called to be pastors. Some people are called to be singers. Some people evangelists, administrators. You know, all this stuff in there. Well, I'm going to tell you guys something right now. Every single one of you, the moment you gave your life to Christ have a calling on your life, and that calling is to preach the word, to be an evangelist, amen? But we, we often don't know how to do it, and we want to leave it up to other people that are a little more vocal, a little more bold. Look, 
you guys, if you're not doing that, if you're not praying with people, man, if you're not sharing your faith, and I don't mean like a, like a lunatic on a, you know, a milk crate with a Bible in your hand screaming at the top of your lungs. This is very ineffective, by the way, and you're probably going to hit, hit with a bottle or something anyway. Just sharing your testimony of, you know what, I've had some bad times in my life. We're going through some stuff right now, but I want to tell you something, man. Jesus brought me out of my pit, all right? And this pit, he's going to bring us out of this one too, one way or the other. And everybody in here has the ability to do that. One other thing that people aren't doing anymore is talking. People don't talk. They don't communicate like in speaking. It's either like with text or emails or phone calls, something like that. But when you're like in a store or something like that, it's like, it's like a mausoleum, man. Nobody talks anymore. It's really a trip walking around. And I'll start talking to people. It freaks them out. And they're like, what are you doing? Well, I'm talking to you. Why? What? What do you want? I'm like, I don't want anything, man. You know, maybe, maybe a bite of your Snickers. But other than that, nothing, you know, really. And they, there's like a weird transition when they finally realize you really don't want anything. All you want to do is have a conversation. And they just start yapping, man. They start talking and stuff. And before long, I think, you know, the Holy Spirit opens up doors, man. And they start feeling more and more comfortable talking to a complete stranger. They may walk away from that going, why did I just tell them, you know, I robbed banks and stuff? <laughs> the Holy Spirit is like truth serum, man. People, they'll tell you stuff you don't even want to know. You know, you're like, okay, you know, can we just get to the prayer part right now? You know, they start talking about nibble baths like Frank over there, man. And then before you know it, the conversation goes really weird, okay? Shout for joy, all you upright in heart. If your heart's not upright with Jesus tonight, get your heart upright with him. And all that means is this. All that means is, you know what? Man, I was kind of stuck in this funky place, man. And I forgot how much power I have in the Son of God. That's where we need to get our heart right. Even though you still got junk going on in your life, hey, welcome to the human race, right? But once we can get our, our, play, our heart in that place, then we can go out there and start helping others. And listen, the more you help others, the more your heart gets stronger and stronger and stronger. Your faith gets bigger and stronger. The blessings of Jesus come into your life and you start recognizing them. Because I think we get a lot of blessings, man, and they just like right over our head. Because we're so hung up on the junk that's going on, man. And, I, and you know what? The news is dra drag. You know, you try to watch the news to keep up on stuff, you know? So you're like, whatever the country might be at any given point. And I don't know what happened to the news, but it ain't the news no more. It's like Jerry Springer. Yeah. All the time. There, I don't even know where you go to get the news, but I can tell you where to get the truth. Amen. This is where the truth is right here. When you get all hung up on the news and the, and the things of the world, get back into your word, man. And, you know, the, I think the news is a tool of the enemy, to be honest with you, because it distracts us. We end up walking away, shaking our head, going, man, this world sucks. And then we, we don't take the time to get into the word. And you know what? If you guys have done it, how many of you guys ever kind of read the Bible, do daily bread, stuff like that? I mean, for real. Amen. Listen, I encourage you that don't, to start, for one thing, amen, because no matter what's really going on in your life, you can dive into the Psalms, you can dive into Proverbs, anywhere, and you'll get a spiritual lift from it. It's not going to change what's going on externally around you, but it'll change what's happening internally, inside you, and it'll give you more strength to stand up to the external stuff, all right? So our calling, go with me over to Philippians. This is... Uh, this is what Paul said, all right? Paul said, rejoice in the Lord always. So how often would you say Paul's recommending that we rejoice in the Lord? Always. All the time, man. You get a short paycheck, you're like, hallelujah, <laughs> you know? Praise the Lord, because sometimes Dad has a way of bringing blessings around, you know? But if anybody had reason to not rejoice, it would have been Paul. I mean, that dude... Got beat up, whipped, shipwrecked. I mean, he got stoned, and not the good stoned. Well, depending on your perspective, all right? He got, he got the kind of stoned with a rock. He got bit by a snake. Um, the lashes and stuff, they got thrown in prison. And ultimately, you know, they killed him at the end. But yet, throughout all that stuff, every time that stuff happened to him, he got stronger and stronger and stronger because Paul figured it out early on. 
He said, when I'm weak, then I'm strong. So the more the world did to him, the stronger he got in the Lord. And I can totally relate to Paul right now because the more junk that happens in the world, the more I want to go out into the world. I mean, we've been, doing, we've been doing events like motorcycle events for, you know, the last decade. But very rarely have we got out into the community because, I mean, frankly, the community doesn't know how to deal with us. You know, when we, when we go out there, there's already this real air of happiness about you guys. But when you add in what you look like to the, the laughter... It takes on a one flew over the cuckoo's nest kind of vibe for this part. Until they get close enough to see that, you know, well, I mean, you know what the truth is? It looks like one flew over the cuckoo's nest. There's just no fix in that one right there. But it's okay because, you know what? Has anybody ever been locked up in a mental institution? Anybody? I was. And I tell you, man, it, it can be fun. I mean, it can be scary too. But it turns out the reason they put people in places like that is because they're freaking crazy. Amen. But they can be funny crazy. Until they're, you know, getting, like, scary crazy, then it's not fun anymore. You know what? Never mind about the whole institution thing. Because the <laughs> fact is, I'm the only one that raised my hand in the room. So either you guys are all that in a bag of zip ties or somebody's lying. <laughs> oh, look. Yeah, I did. Hallelujah. Now the G's freaking coming out. Oh, hell yeah. I was there, man. Yeah, I had a padded room and everything, man. So Paul's saying, rejoice always in the Lord. Again, I will say rejoice. So there's a duplication and a repetition and a repeating of a, of a command. He says rejoice always. Again, I'm going to tell you, rejoice. The world needs to see it, and you need to give it to the world. Amen? Look, if you're going through it, welcome to the club, all right? We're all in it, right? Is anybody going through stuff? Let me just establish a borderline here. Okay, so everybody in here pretty much is going through one thing or another. Amen? People that are sick, people that have passed away. I mean, there's all kinds of weird stuff that's going on, amen? Can you rejoice in it, though? Yes. That's the key to this whole thing tonight, is if we can rejoice in the suffering. Remember that, that Hebrews said that Jesus, for, for, for joy set before him, Jesus endured the cross. And you're like, wait a minute. He was beaten and like skin peeled off him with whips. He had nails spiked through his wrist, man, and he suffered and all that. Like, how can that be a joyful thing? Well, listen, let me tell you what, man. Every step of the way, you know, when they arrested Jesus and all through the Passion, his joy was building. You want to think about it because he's getting hammered and beaten and stuff like that. But he was getting closer and closer and closer to resurrection. But he had to go through all that stuff in order to die for our sins. But on the third day, he defeated death. And when I say death... That includes everything that I was talking about now. Death is the ultimate drag. All the stuff that we're dealing with goes behind death. So he defeated all of that for us. So, of course, he was joyful because he knew that upon his resurrection that we would now have available to us that same joy that was set before him on the cross because he was obedient to the Father and so are we. Amen? And he was the roadmap right to it, man. All we got to do is follow and understand that there's nothing going on in this room that was more severe than what went on in that cross right there. Amen? But it was done for the joy. And I know that's weird, but Christianity is weird, man. We, we mourn when we lose people, but we celebrate because they're going home to be with the Lord. Amen? And then we miss them because they're not here, but we know that one day we'll be reunited with them again. Amen? It's hard to be a Christian sometimes, you know? You want to be good, and, and you want to, you know, not be sinful and, and do stupid stuff like that, and then somebody will walk right across the street in front of you, man, while you're driving. And, you know, I, I, was, I got into a bad habit of clipping them with my mirror, because my mirrors, like, fold in, you know, so it's like, it kind of goes, boom, and then it slaps back out and stuff, and I drive, it wasn't me, you know, because my mirrors are right. I, I got really conflicted about it, you know, being a Christian and all and stuff like that. So what I did is I came up with this idea. And what I did is I smeared anointing oil all over my mirrors. And just before I clipped them, I'm like, God bless you, boom! <laughs> and you know what happened? Like almost every, I think I put a little more truck into it after the anointing oil, because maybe they slip off a little bit better. Anyway, every single time they would spin around and then they would just be slain in the spirit. They just lay on the ground going, hallelujah! I mean, I assume that's what they were saying. I couldn't hear because I had my truck. But I could see him in my rearview mirror all laid out on the ground. I'm like, hallelujah, praise the Lord. Let that Holy Spirit out <laughs> over them, man. Amen. I got me nothing. Then I started getting them on the sidewalk. They weren't even in the street. I went, oh, pop. <laughs> yeah. What happened to all the oil? Well, <laughs> uh, 
you see me, you see me driving down the street and I got my hand up with a rag on my mirror? Get out of the street, man. Because I'm out sharing Jesus with people. Amen. I know it's probably not going to last. There's probably some law. I don't know. Anyway, look at, look at, can we focus for just a second? Oh, man, I'm telling you. Hey, you're in the same hole. Hello. Okay. Look at 2 Corinthians 6 with me real quick. This is, you know, look, it, it's all about perspective tonight, all right? If you're not getting hammered by this world, something's wrong. As a believer in Christ, from the moment you got saved, there was assignments on your butt, man. The enemy's like, oh, no, we're not letting this one go. Well, this is too late for the enemy anyway. He can't get you. But check this out in Corinthians. Again, Paul, all right, he says, we give no offense in anything that our ministry may not be blamed. So the whole thing with the mirrors, probably not a good idea. I wouldn't recommend doing it, all right? It, there's a possibility, slim as it might be, somebody might get offended by getting clipped by one of my mirrors, okay? From now on, I stand before you, Scout's Honor, no more clipping people with my mirrors, amen? Okay, you've heard it, it's on whatever, is that cassette or video or whatever? Yeah. And just, you know, as a disclaimer, I make all this stuff up as I go, so I've never really clipped anybody with a mirror with my truck. <laughs> Ever. We have my truck. <laughs> right. Yeah, that, that's, the, that's the little yeah, thing, right? Don't loan me your car. <laughs> Why is there hair on my mirror? <laughs> Ew, right? Okay. Are you going to sneeze again? Okay. But in all things, we commend ourselves as ministers of God. In much patience... Oh, there's the P word, right? I prayed, I, I had a friend of mine a long time ago, he goes, hey man, can you pray for patience for me? I'm like, sure, I pray for patience for him, and his life fell apart, man. And it was like a couple years later, man, he's like, man, don't ever pray for me again. I'm like, well, you asked for it, dude. Right? If, I mean, James says, hey, consider it all joy when you go through trials. Why? Because it develops your patience, amen? I got a lot of patience. Look at, look at you guys, right? I mean... What? I mean that in love. He says, in much patience and tribulations, which we're going through, in needs and distresses and stripes and imprisonment and tumults, like the riots and whatnot, in labors and sleeplessness and fastings, by purity, and this is how we do it now, by purity, by knowledge, by long suffering, by kindness, by the Holy Spirit, by sincere love, by the word of truth, by the power of God, by the armor of righteousness on the right hand and on the left, by honor and dishonor, by evil report and good report, as deceivers and yet true, as unknown yet well known, as dying and behold we live, as chastened yet not killed, as sorrowful yet always rejoicing, as poor yet making many rich, as having nothing yet possessing all things. Wow. Isn't that such a great verse right there, man? He's telling us unequivocally, huh? Unequivocably. That was seven. Seven syllables. Wow. Can I get a praise the Lord on that? Hallelujah. All right. Okay. That was kind of vain. But anyway, praise the Lord. It's all vanity. Vanity, vanity. It's all vanity. Anyway, he's telling us how to do all this stuff by what he's telling us is face the junk. Don't run away from it or hide from it. The more stuff that comes at us and the more stuff we pray through personally, the stronger that we get. And the stronger we get when we encounter people out there that are going through long suffering, that are going through sorrows, that are going through pains, that are going through purity, going through whatever they're going through, we can tell them, hey man, check it out, I've been there. And, and I'm here to tell you right now that the power of the blood of Christ can pass all that stuff away for you, man. And you give them hope. And right now, man, we need to give those people hope because there's a lot of hopeless dope fiends out there. Amen? And we need them to be dopeless hope fiends. That's the idea. I don't know if any of you have ever gone down that road before. Anybody ever been, like, really strung out on drugs in here? You know what's funny about that? Because I'd be like, check this out, watch. How many of you really love Jesus in here? I mean, really, really with all your heart. Okay, so that's my point right there. If you guys are looking at the camera, you're like, yes, I love Jesus. Anybody ever strung out on drugs? You're like, yeah, I don't know. Some of, some of you guys are like this. I don't even know what that means. Pointing to the people next to you. You know, I, I believe in, in uh, 
outreach terms, that's called projecting, right? Is that what it is? Yeah. You're projecting. Okay. But anyway, Wednesday night, 630, you need to be here. Okay. Right over there in Bluesville, man. Come and fix yourself or get, let Jesus fix you. Anyway, so, you know, the last part there, he said, is poor yet making many rich. I don't know about you guys, but I ain't rolling in the dough. Anybody here, like, filthy rich? You know, like, exceedingly have a lot of money? Frank, can you talk to you after church? Anybody else here that's exceedingly wealthy? Yeah? Check it out. It's okay, man, because our desire is to make them rich out there. I'm not talking about money here, man. I'm talking about rich in blessings, which means we want to make them rich in happiness, man. You, you could give somebody a thousand bucks. In fact, you can give me, like, someone give me a thousand bucks real quick. A hundred. Ten. One. <laughs> ah, yeah, praise the Lord. And they might be happy for a couple minutes, you know, a couple days, whatever. But there's nothing eternal about that, man. It's all external. It's all of the world. There's nothing in the world that's going to make you happy for any length of time. You might be happy in the world standards, but remember, that word is, the word is hap. The root word of happy is hap, and it means good luck. That's what the word means. In the, term, in, in the world's term of happy, it means like good luck being happy, you know? But in God's terms, happy is, is exceedingly happy, almost like nutty happy. Like, you can be happy and joyful in the worst circumstances, man, yet you still feel this joy and happiness in you. That's the Holy Spirit transcending all your junk, man. And we can give that to those people out there, but we got to get ourselves in this place. And the perspective is, expect problems. Ex look, I don't why, I understand why Christians think that once you get saved... Everything's, all, everything's great, man. There ain't no problems left, man. You're going to just walk on clouds and play a harp someday up on a cloud or somewhere. The fact of the matter is, every, most people I've known that have given their life to Christ have come back to report that their life is hell now. Like all kinds of stuff's breaking loose. They lose their job, man. All kinds of bad things are happening. And I'm like, well, you know, then they blame it on God of all things, you know. Like, well, you know, you, you have an enemy now and you have a big target on your back and, and that's probably part of what's going on in your life. But, don't, but understand this. You're also, you've all, when you give your life to Christ, you've joined a club, and it's, it's a gym. It's the Lord's gym. And God wouldn't have it that we're a bunch of little spaghetti back Christians running around here all wimpy and non-effective. So sometimes we have to go through some fires, amen. We have to go through some valleys and stuff so that we can learn and understand just how powerful Jesus is when, when the psalm says that you walk through the valley of the shadow of death, but I'll fear no evil. That's where we need to get to, where we understand that whatever's going on, we're going to fight. We're going to be throwing fists. We're going to be going to knuckles, with whatever it is. But we're never going to walk it alone, ever. And that's what we forget sometimes. We get into some funks, man, and we get all lives all messed up and stuff like that. And we forget Jesus is right there, man. He, we forget that there's warring angels about us, man. And we forget the Holy Spirit indwells within us. We have so much power as Christians, so much power to share with the world. Yet we internalize it, man. And I'm determined before this year is over, because this year sucked. I don't know if you guys have noticed that. That we're going to open up our hearts, and we're just going to pour it out. We're, whatever we got, man, we're going to pour it out and give it away. Just give it away to them. Amen? And I give you my word that what Jesus puts back in you by the end of this year is going to be more powerful than you've probably experienced in your whole Christian career. Because right now, we're standing right on the edge of a very lost and broken world. And they're not even out there. They're right there. They're, they're right there, man. It, you know, you got to think about going fishing and stuff. Like, it's not even a challenge right now, man. People are so broken, and they need hope. But you know what? If nobody tells them, they're never going to know. Amen? And they're going to get stuck in that place right there. And how do we know whose lives we're impacting? Who, how do we know what they're going to do with their life once it's given to Christ, amen? You just never know who you're preaching to when you share the word. It, and it may not have anything to do with you after that moment, and they may go on to lead ministries that are worldwide, man. And it just took that one seed to be planted. Amen? And I can tell you, good man, you all have, you're like, a, you're like sacks of seed, amen? All you got to do is be willing to let it go. Anybody pick up seed cards? 
Anybody have seed cards? Well, you know, if you don't, get them. They're right over there by the back door by Tracy there. We got some new battle tracks over there on the baptismal. Grab them, man. Grab them and give them to people. You just never know whose life you're going to change, right? So the last one is this, the healing. This is where it all kind of comes together, amen? Look at John 13 with me right quick. John 13. John 13, uh, 34 and 35. A new command I give to you, that you love one another, as I have loved you, that you also love one another. By this, by this all will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. And that's the, that's the key to the happy tour. You know, people are like, you know, we're all we're out there at the booth and people are like cussing each other out and stuff like that. It's not very attractive, you know. People are all mad and angry and, you know, you got the little clicks over there gossiping and stuff like that. You know, we won't have it. We're, we're not even going to put up with that. I have a fire extinguisher for that and I will use it. Amen. It, it, it's not pretty. It, it's not even like a fun fire extinguisher. It's like a lot of force behind it and some chemicals that are probably bad for the skin. I don't know. We want to be out there where people look across a parking lot and they see those jar free pair thing, and then, then they like see the teeth. The teeth. There, there's the teeth. Could you just stand up real quick and like stand in the middle aisle for just a second and do the Mayor of Bluesville? There you go. Turn around. Do your pirouette. There, you see that on camera? Okay, see the teeth right there? Okay, that's what they see. They see happy, man. And you know what? It's contagious. They're drawn to it, man. They, they may not even know why, but all they know is they just came out of a store and everybody's all bent out of shape and bummed and down and they're playing some crazy elevator music of the Moody Blues or something. I don't know. <laughs> they come out in a parking lot, man, and they're, they're trying to figure out how they're going to make it through the week because they just spent more money than they want to spend on their dog because some people in this place spend like literally, no kidding, like 70 bucks a month on dog treats, all right? Anybody else in here? Okay, thank God I'm not the only one, man. When you go to my house, there's a shelf. It looks like a shelf at Target, man. It's like got the, we got the pepperonis. We got the little ones with the hot dog and the little meat inside. Then we got the little steak ones. and we got the long steak ones. We got the little teeny ones. You take the little bones. You put, I put two pieces of steak in there, put them together. I call it a Sadie sandwich. It's hers at night, amen. In the morning, she got the bacon, begging strips or something like that, man. And then the medium-sized bones to go along with that. And then I have these crunchy things that are like crunchy on the outside and soft on the inside. It's ridiculous, amen? It's absolutely ridiculous. She's got literally four different size and types of bones <laughs> to chew and multiple treats and stuff like that. She's a little overweight, but you know what? Here's the deal. She's freaking old, man. She's, she's, like, she's like 90 or something like that. Like in dog years, I'm like 77 now in dog years, and she's like a little bit older than I am in dog years. And she won't die. I know that sounds mean and stuff like that, but it's like, oh, this poor girl. She didn't even go home and be a Bonnie and Blackster man and romp around him wherever the field is at Jesus' house for him. I don't know. But this dog, man, she's just, she's like a, she just keeps plugging along, man. I know she doesn't love me. She only comes to me when I have treats, man. She's like a cat. Cats don't love you, you cat people. You're, you're totally being just fooled by them. They only purr, stuff with her head and uh, you give them a treat and it's like later gator or when it's time to eat yeah i've had some cats before i love cats man with like a little broccoli and i'm kidding oh you cat people <laughs> he says by this you'll know that, that they'll all know you're my disciples if you have love for one another man they the way we treat each other the way we act towards each other they want to be part of that man even though they don't know us they're drawn into all that stuff, man. And listen, if you smile, they will come. We've seen it happen before, man. Okay, go to, go to Ephesians with me real quick here. Go to Ephesians uh, 3. Check this out. Now, to him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think. Remember, you know, I come up with all kinds of weird stuff. You might have noticed that around, you know, every now and then. Like, hey, I got an idea. And everyone goes, oh, boy. You never know, but hey, you know what? One of my ideas was coming up with Bluesville. Is Bluesville cool? I think Bluesville is cool. Amen. I said, hey, you know what we ought to do? We ought to hang a motorcycle from the ceiling. Boom! There it is right there. We got a motorcycle hanging from the ceiling. You know what? I think it'd even be cooler if we like hang a shotgun in front of the sound booth. Boom! There's a shotgun hanging in front of the sound booth right there. I dare you to go to any church where you can find knives and actual Indian arrows and a skull with a bullet hole in it hanging on the wall. Amen. We are definitely a different kind of place right here. 
But you know why this works for us? Because we feel at home here. This is our home away from home. This is our family, man. And he's going, you can, as much as you can think, dad can do even more exceeding. I'm talking about this love tour right now. We're going to go to parking lots and probably get kicked out. But it doesn't matter because here's the deal. We're going to close the doors and drive to another parking lot. <laughs> Whoop, and open them right back up. God's got it all worked out. In fact, you guys don't even know it right now. They don't even know it right now, but God's already put it on the hearts to be at the same place that we're at at the same exact time in need of prayer. It's already worked out, you guys. All you got to do is show up. Show up and be happy. He goes, according to the power of the works in us to give to him be the glory in the church by Christ Jesus to all generations forever and ever. Amen. That's us. We're another generation, amen, and we need to step it up as Christians. Get out there and do some stuff out there, man. Go back with me to the very beginning, back to Psalm 100. We might have missed something here, but I'm going to show it to you real quick, all right? Back to Psalm 100, just the first two verses. Make a joyful shout to the Lord, all you lands. All you lands, make a joyful shout. Now, you got to be right in the heart. I'm not talking about salvation right now, man. I'm talking about trust, trusting in the Lord. We give our life to Jesus for our eternal salvation, man. We'll go home and be with the Lord. But in, your, in this life between then and now, are you trusting him with all your stuff or just some of it? You know, I, I trust him with this. I trust him with that. But I don't know. This thing over here with my kids, I better take care of that. Isn't it weird how we separate the things that we feel more qualified to deal with than God Almighty that created everything, including us? It's just weird to me that sometimes... We don't just lay it out. We're like, what are you, ashamed or something? Like, well, I don't want God to know that I haven't paid my bills. He already knows. You're, you're, not, you're not fooling God. Well, I don't want God to, to see that weird part of me. Ugh. God has seen all the stuff you do in your bathroom. He's God. He's dad, okay? He knows everything about you. And you know what? He still loves you. Oh, I know. Did that one touch a nerve? I'm sorry. Anyway, I'm just trying to keep it real here, all right? You know, and, and all the good stuff that we do, he sees all that. He understands all the bad stuff, too. When you're doing something you ain't supposed to be doing, guess what? Jesus is down right behind you going, oh, boy. I know, get that little visual in your head, huh? That, that, really, that really saved me a lot of trouble on the ranch when the guys wanted to run off and be with the girls' neighbor. I'm like, well, you go ahead and do that. But Jesus is going to be standing right in that room looking at you the whole time. And it just, like, was a buzzkill. All of a sudden, they're like, well, I want to go now. Oh. <laughs> go bigger right make a joyful shout to the lord all you land serve the lord with gladness come before his presence with singing when we come to the lord man we gotta come expecting good things to be happening expecting people to be blessed expecting people's lives to change oh the tears will be flowing there's criers in here man some of you you can't even like go through a sentence without crying when when people are being blessed and that's all right man johnny miller was a crier you guys remember Johnny? He played drums. We'd be singing praise songs and stuff like that. And he never missed a beat. But I'd look back at him and be like, oh! he'd be back there crying. But he's drumming, man. He was doing his thing. He had such a tender heart, man. And you know what? He took that tender heart right on to heaven. Amen? Amen. And you know what? One day, we're going to have a hell of a band in heaven. Yeah. You know, we really are. It's okay to be sensitive like that, man. When the Holy Spirit is breaking you, just break, man. Stop pushing back. Stop pushing back from what the Holy Spirit wants you to do. We're, we're just ripping ourselves off, man. He says, come before his presence with singing. We want to come out there, man, expecting blessings to happen. Amen. Oh, you, know, you know what you got to do, you guys? You just got to show up. All you got to do is show up. Just show up and be happy. Amen. Just, just push away all your, whatever it is, that your embarrassment, shame guilt man check it at the door and just go today i'm here to serve god in a joyful happy exciting way man lord have your way with me and set up the divine appointments for me man and then you know what fasten the seatbelt, man because dad will take you on a joy ride that you have never seen before it's all going to start with the happy tour amen that's why we call it the happy tour we got to dress like hippies though so other than that I got my round, my round sunglasses and stuff, oh, wow. my John Lennons. Look, here's the application tonight, you guys. We can't help anyone until we can be joyful in our own lives. Just try to grab a hold of that a little bit tonight and everything we've been talking about, man. If you can't find joy in your life, you need to stop 
drop and roll, doc, roll. Amen. Figure out what's going on. Why are you holding stuff back from God? Why aren't you giving everything? Why aren't you just laying it all out, man? He already knows everything, and he loves you, and he wants to do stuff with you. Let's pray right now. Father, we, we lift this whole night up to you, Lord. And we thank you for all that you're bringing to us, Father, and the happy to her, Lord. And I pray that you open all of our hearts up to everything that you have for them. And Lord, if there's even one person here tonight or out there that doesn't know your son as Savior, then this is their moment right now. And as all of us pray together as a family, we lift up that one or two or ten or a hundred or a thousand people that might hear this word tonight and that are starving to be happy right now, Lord. So, Father, we ask that you hear this prayer and that you receive them in Jesus' name. Let's all pray. Father God, I sinned against you, Lord, and I ask you to forgive me of my sin. And Jesus, I invite you into my heart to be the Lord and Savior of my life. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. Let me be happy. Let me be glad and let me rejoice in your son, Jesus. Lord, we thank you in Jesus' name. Get an amen. 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 All right, well, check it out, man. Hang around for a little bit. We're going to fellowship a little bit, man. We got, we're going to have pizza going on. It's spoken word night, amen. Amen. Yeah. So we're going to be hanging out out front. We can't open up the shop next door right now. Sorry, but we're going to have pizza and something. Pot? What are we having? I don't know. There was something else. I knew it was green. <laughs> and dessert. That's right. So pizza, salad, <laughs> then dessert. And don't forget to wash your hands, all right? Don't split. Go get some pizza next door. Keep your eyes on Jesus. God bless you guys. Let's eat. <laughs>